Hey guys, and welcome to another video. Today we will look at different ways of managing multiple state values in your app in React. You are probably familiar by now with use state hook and how it's being used to track single state value. It's a pretty simple concept. The problem is in real life, you will most likely need to track multiple state values. So what happens if you have two or 100 of them and need to use them together or separately in various places in your application? Should you really create 100 separate use state hooks? Well, technically you can and it will work, but it's not the best practice. In this video, I will show you natural code evolution from the very beginner using multiple use state hooks and repeating their code, like you can see on the screen, to more advanced, which is passing one big object and managing state this way, to more advanced stuff, which is exporting your component outside your main function and passing the data between the parent and the child with the props which will make your code scalable and expandable, and we will show that. If this sounds interesting, this video is for you. First method of managing multiple state values is managing them by simply calling useState multiple times in your component function. Let's do it on the example of user registration form where we have input boxes for username, email, password, and password confirmation. For now on my screen here, you can see the simplest possible React app with just one input field, username. It has handle change method that gets activated on the event and saves user input to the state. This function renders the form with this one input field that you can see on the screen. If you want to add more input fields, you can just create them one by one and use useState hook to manage the state of each of them. So let's do it quickly. In this setup, each of them needs to have separate handle change function, which we'll call set function. So let's copy this one three times and just change the function names. And now in our form itself, we also need to copy the header and input component three times and link it with appropriate variables. For email input, link it with email label, placeholder and value and assign handle change email function to on change. For password with password label, placeholder and value, assign handle change password to on change prop and the same for the password confirmation. You probably already noticed that there is a lot of copy pasting going on here, which is not good. But when we check our app, we can see it works. Well, except the last part, it's because I linked password value here. So let's correct and retry. Okay, now it's perfect. In general, this can be acceptable approach if your UI is simple and you never need to expand it. You can register as many use state slices as you need in your component. You can have hundreds of them. Typically though, you will only have a couple of state slices per component since you should try to split bigger components into multiple smaller components to keep them manageable. If you have multiple such inputs, you may use second method, which is using one single big state object, which brings us to the solution number two. Method number two is using one single big state object to manage multiple state values. I copied the code from method number one and I will edit it in app to file. So 
So in this section, I will show you how instead of managing multiple states like this, we can also manage a single merge state object, which will look like this. So we only have one use state hook here, and we obviously need to change the names here to be more representative of the content. Let's call it form data and set form data. We can also define initial values object outside our component function and pass it to use state like this. In our component now, instead of referencing separate state slices, we will call our object with appropriate prop names formdata.username, formdata.email, etc. To track the changes in my state, I will also output those props above my input boxes. This is just for debugging purposes. So I will output here username, email, password, password confirmation, and entire object. Because it's an object, we need to wrap it with JSON stringify. This way I can quickly see if my object updates correctly. Again, this is just for debugging purposes and you will see that later. We also need to rethink our handle change function because our object looks different now and it should only update part of the state and leave the rest the same. We didn't have this issue when we were dealing with separate state slices. What we want here is when user types something into a username input, for example, our new state should copy inputs from previous state for all the fields and update only the one that we are currently editing, so username. To do this, we can simply update all four handle change functions like this. So for handle change username, username will update value and the rest will reference previous data. For handle change email, email will update value and the rest will reference previous data. And so on. After those edits, we can see that we don't need to change anything in the component as the function names haven't changed. We can see this code works. But we still see a lot of code repetitions, so we can still make it better. Instead of four separate handle change functions, we can make handle change function more generic and pass the field name and target value as arguments and use those arguments to decide which values we update and which we leave the same. Set form data will take the previous data object and will update the value only for the field that name is passed. So what we are doing here is basically we are parameterizing the previous versions of this function. We'll call this function in all of our input components. So currently what we have in here is the old handle change username function, which can also be stated like this. This old function takes one argument, which is an event. Since we changed the definition of our handle change function, and now our new function takes two arguments, we will just replace the old argument with the new ones. We'll replace event argument with field name and new value, which is event target value. And we will do the same for all of them.
Going back to our UI, all works perfectly. We can now delete our previous handle change functions. Before we move to more code optimization, let's summarize what we did so far. In this example, use state is called only once, and the initial value passed to use state is a JavaScript object. This object contains four properties username, email, password, and password confirmation with corresponding values. When managing the state objects as shown, there is one crucial thing you need to keep in mind. You must always set all properties the object contains, even the ones that didn't change. And we did it in our setFormData function. This is required because when calling the state updating function, you tell React which new state value should be stored internally. Because of it, any value you pass as an argument to the state updating function will override the previously stored one. This is common pitfall and therefore something you must pay attention to. If we forgot to copy values from previous state, we would get a totally different object as a result, an undefined reference error at some point. Let's comment out the part of the code that is responsible for copying the previous data and see what happens. You can see that the structure of the object after every update is totally changed. Now we can see that this code can still be better because if we wanted to add another input field to our data, we would need to duplicate input component, which can make our main component bloated at some point. We can see that all of our input fields are pretty much the same. They follow the same structure and they just intake different data. This brings us to the method number three, exporting the component outside the main function and using props to pass data between the parent and the child. I will show you how to do it in the next section. The only thing that was left to optimize in our code is the repeating input component, which we can solve by exporting our input component outside the main function. Let's look at our input components first, as we need to think about what props we are going to be passing to the child component. We can see each input has different label, placeholder, value, each of them has the same onChange function, but the function intakes different arguments. So those will be our props we will be passing. Let's create input component with those props outside our main function and return the repeating part in the return statement. That's our high-level template for our input component. OnChange currently references handle change function in parent component, and that's why it's highlighted as error. Um, we need to create local handle change and reference it here. The content of this onChange will be the same as before, so I will just copy that. I will rename the change function in our parent component to handle input change so we are not confused by duplicated names. And we can change the references here for now so we don't have errors. This local handle change will call the parent handle input change with two arguments, field name and value just like it did in each component in section two. Which tells us that we need another prop to be passed, which is field name. Field name is a key in our object and new value will be simply event target value. So that's pretty much it. Our child component is ready. But speaking of object, the structure of our object storing the data has changed. Each key will now be mapped to another object, which will have label, placeholder, and value props. Previous object just had a key and a value associated with it.
And because we changed the object structure, we need to change how we reference those values in our components. So username value now will be referenced as form data dot username dot value. And the same for others. Let's check out our object structure in UI. We can see in UI that we have a key for each of them and then each key has a label, placeholder and a value mapped to it. Just like we defined in initial values. There is another consequence of modifying the object. Our set form data needs to be updated to reflect new object structure. We will take previous data and then for the past field name, we will copy all its values and update on the value with the new value. This can be a little bit confusing here, but if you look at the syntax carefully, it reflects exactly our initial value object structure. Field name is a placeholder for the key, which then maps to another object. And again, before updating part of this nested object, we need to copy all the data from previous state first, just like we always do. Finally, we can take our form data object and map each key to our input component, passing the data for each key. These are all of our props. And let's remember about properly referencing all of the values from the object. Let's test our code. We can see it works. Let's also do recursive test and remove some part of the string from email or username. We can see it's reflected. So the beauty of this solution is that this input component that we defined is reusable, so can be used in different places in your app. You can pass different data to it and it will generate input components accordingly without adding extra code. So for example, if we add four extra fields to our object now, it will output eight fields. That's why this solution is preferable if your code is expected to scale and expand. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and it helped you understand all possible options of managing multiple state values. If it did, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you guys soon.